Man, what a tough loss, man. Knicks head into Philly. Second road game of the trip on a two-game winning streak, man. Trying to win the season series against the 76ers, man. And this one started out great. Our guy, the floor general, the all-star snub, Jalen Brunson, went out there and was showing the world why he deserves to go to Utah, man. 20 points in the first quarter alone. Absolutely shredding. Sixers defenders, Julius Randle was making it look easy, man. 30 points apiece between our two all-stars. But in the third quarter, things started to unravel. Untimely mistakes. A Sixers 11-0 run. And in the fourth quarter, we had ourselves a battle. A battle that the Knicks did not show up to, man. Knicks get bombed away from three. 18 to six in the fourth. And just could not answer back. The Sixers onslaught, man. Sixers pull away down the stretch. 119 to 108. And the Knicks lose a heartbreaker, man. Absolute heartbreaker. Let's talk about it. You know, you're watching this game, man, and things are just looking so good. The floor general is cooking. Julius is having a smooth game, catch and shoot threes. He's letting it, it's letting it fly. You know, Hartenstein coming in, giving you a good effort off the bench. IQ. Nick's taking a six-point lead into the half. Up by as much as 13. And in the third, things just started to come apart at the seams. And one play in particular, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw my guy under the bus totally, but one play in particular that set this thing off. Knicks are up 86 to 78, and RJ throws a bad inbounds pass. Brunson couldn't get it. Sixes get it to Maxi for three. And that was part of the Sixers' 11-0 run. And then once again, the fourth quarter, Sixers D tightened up, went back to the zone, started bombing away from three. George is Niang, our favorite guy, wide open. Maxi cooking. Harden, cooking. Embiid, cooking. Caught Jericho Sims twice with his hand in the cookie jar. I mean, that's Jericho. I'm not going to throw him on the bus. He, not too many people can handle B. But the point is, when the Sixers turned up the heat, the Knicks ran out the kitchen, man. Ran out the back door. They couldn't answer. 119 to 108. Tough loss. Could have won the season series. Put some pressure on this thing in the East. Couldn't, couldn't fight. Couldn't match it. Couldn't match a firepower, man. Such a frustrating loss. I understand that the, the cliches... You know, it's tough to beat a good team multiple times in a season. You know, I mean, you saw you saw the headlines coming, right? You saw it coming, CP. They, uh, We just beat them a few games ago at the Garden. Now you're going into their home. They're going to remember that. Uh, they're healthy. And, you know, it's just the ebbs and flows of an 82-game uh, NBA season when you're playing the same team a few times in your division. This game was trending towards being the most – complete together game of a season that team before they made that run that team looked like a team that remember when we had the weekly show and we were debating about matchups yeah 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 up until that point i was like give me the six i know i know i know i'm like oh man I'm trying to JD, tell jd's about to come in hot on post game if we i'm win trying this to game. tell ya i already do that i already do we that, match man. up against them i'm trying to tell ya they can't guard brunson i'm trying to tell like, <laughs> I was I was getting so excited about that possibility. Like I'm not scared of the Sixers, man. They they in the big spot. We're right there with them. Yeah. And and then you know things unraveled, and and you mentioned that turning point. That's also my turning point of the game. Yes, hindsight 2020, we could attack certain points after that. That you know transpired to the loss, but. Up until that point, that team, they looked like they were just about ready to tap out. They looked like they were like, okay, we can't beat this team tonight. We don't have it. The Knicks had every answer for them up until that point. Yeah. 
when you give a team like that that type of opportunity, we're not talking about a bad team lingering. We're talking about a very good. We're talking about Great a team. potential championship contending team, right? In their home, and you give them, and, and you know how it works, CP, in terms of momentum, adrenaline, you know, energy, mm -hmm. that type of turnover, and then Maxi on top of that shooting the corner three, uh, you know, uh, um, not the corner three, the but right. Yeah, the elbow three, all the way almost by the out of bounds line. Yeah, and he makes that three. That type of moment just galvanizes the team, and you could see it energized it energized the team, um, and gave them all the adrenaline and momentum that they needed. And you gave that team belief. And after that, things started to get tough. And at that point, you're expecting the Knicks team to close it out. And in the fourth, they didn't have enough. They only scored 15 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And listen, I don't know, man. This thing is going to get interesting because I don't know if you guys saw that pregame uh, presser with Thibodeau. And that guy, the way he was talking about Josh Hart. Yeah, he's ready to get him in there. He's ready to get him in there. He would have had him in there in street clothes if he could have. <laughs> he is ready to unwrap the new toy. I want to talk about R.J. Barrett um, and Josh Hart. Um, I like Josh Hart. I think he should start. Um, I'm putting Grimes at the two. I'm trying to get R.J. more comfortable and more confidence. Um, I don't think R.J. Barrett – I'm being honest. I just want to be honest with you. I always am. Um, yeah, the sloppy turnover killed us, the inbounds, but he can't play defense. He can't make open threes. Yeah, he shot three for five from three, but if you watch the game, like, they're, they're laying off him. He's just so inconsistent. He has a good first half, and then the second half, he's not a reliable third guy. He can't finish. He can't make free throws. His handle's not that good, and when he gets in the paint, he doesn't find the open man. There was a play, CP, where Brunson makes a layup. He cut it to three at the end of the game. Brunson makes an incredible play. He banks a layup. We, we, get a, we get a defensive stop. Brunson gets a pick and gives the ball to RJ. He wanted the ball back. RJ just took this like weird little floater angle yeah. and, that you knew wasn't going in. Yeah. I wanted the ball back to Brunson. Brunson actually had his hands like calling for the ball. Like You have to like understand – Give the ball back to Jalen Brunson there. Like, I, I'm, I'm frustrated with RJ because I and I know I'll get tomatoes because everybody loves RJ. I want RJ. I I think RJ is a really good person. I think he works really hard. I just don't see. I think Josh Hart's going to be better than him because he plays defense, and I just don't. CP, I'm frustrated with RJ because yeah. I'm not. I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it, and I hate to say that, but how do we get a consistent third guy to win a championship? Because that's all I care about. I don't care about – as much as I, I don't want to hurt the guy's feelings, I just want to win a title. No, you're right, man. You, you, you're, getting, uh, you're getting fire emojis in the, in the chat, Ron. You're getting fire emojis. I think, you know, the frustration is real, man. The frustration is real. Yeah. It's frustrating. Um, you know, we, we, we spent the number three pick on him. He's our he's he's our guy, homegrown talent. You want to see him playing a lot better than he is, but th consistency has always been his problem. And he seem he seems like he's regressing. Yeah, Brunson, he gonna continue on doing what he's doing. Y'all don't want to put me in that All Star game, so what? I'm gonna keep taking it out on anybody I see that's in front of me. You're in front of me like a deer with highlights, uh, with, with Airbnb highlights in front of me. I'm taking it out on you. You know what I'm saying? I'm handling my biz, doing what I gotta do, and you gotta appreciate the hard work. Remember at the beginning, oh, he's too small, he's too slow, he all this and that. Where are all those conversations at right here, right now? You know what I'm saying? So you gotta appreciate what he's doing, and you gotta appreciate him and Julia. They rolling and rocking together but hold up you know what I'm, I'm gonna answer that question as far as we gonna go it's on you rj it's on you how far we gonna go you know what I'm saying? you the third man we used to be the top three you know as far as the scoring but then Portland took over that because you started you know what i'm saying being inconsistent doing what you're doing we don't want you to be an all-star we don't care about your tattoo saying i'm him we don't care about none of that we just want you to be consistent on the floor we just want to make sure you know what I'm saying you're giving us our hard work and that energy we just want to make sure when your jumpers off or your 
your game is off, you're not scoring, that you do other things on the floor. You get more rebound. You play more lockdown defense. Take some charges. Get some loose ball. We want you to make sure you tuned in. You know what I'm saying? Pat your man on the back. Let him know I'm here, but I know I'm going through what I'm going through. But I'm here every night. Those are the things that we want from you, RJ, because it's showing on the court the things that's happening with you on the court compared to the things that's, with, that you're doing that's off the court. Let me break it down for you. We played Toronto without you. We bust them. You came back. We played Toronto. We lost them. Same scenario with Philly. Without you on the court, we bust Philly. You come back on the court, we lose to Philly. Those are small situations that I'll be looking at. I don't know about anybody. I'll be looking at those things. When I see you on the court and you need to play against Philly, I take you on my ticket and know we're supposed to air them out. You know what I'm saying? So I think, RJ, you need to turn your game up, keep your game all the way up, because we're going to go as far as you're going to go. Julius doing what he's doing. He don't accept his role and everything. He's playing how he's supposed to play. Brunson doing what he's doing. Quickly doing what he's doing. Grimes doing the best he can. You know what I'm saying? What he doing? Everybody's following suit, doing what they doing. But you got to be a little bit more consistent in your play right now. First thing first, you ain't checking the best player on offense no more. Number two, you ain't getting the top number one or number two defensive player checking you. You getting the third option, so you're supposed to be smashing him anytime he gets in front of you at will. Be like, yo, give me that ball, let me touch, get out the way, clear it out, and finishing at that basket. But you're not doing it. I don't know what the hold up. It's okay for somebody else to have your spot. It's okay for somebody else to be doing better than you. You just got to follow suit. Too many people want to be out of position instead of playing their own position, you know what I'm saying, and let the whole team go together. That's all you got to do, RJ. We love and appreciate. We don't want you to go nowhere. We just want you to turn up because we know far as you're going to go, the Knicks going to go. Jay Boogie with a Friday sermon. Somebody said we got church on a Friday. Yeah, man. It's Jay Boogie. Absolutely cooking yeah, man so anyway we'll be back tomorrow on a back-to-back and we'll get back to the usual theatrics man great show great show jd great show tm gamba everybody alex everybody man edgar all the mods see you guys tomorrow peace